I'm going to start this video just by reading you part of something. There is growing national concern on campuses everywhere about these issues, and we encourage Yale students to take the time to consider their costumes and the impact it may have. So, if you are planning to dress up for Halloween, or will be attending any social gatherings planned for the weekend, please ask yourself these questions before deciding upon your costume choice. Wearing a funny costume? Is the humor based on quote-unquote making fun of real people, human traits, or cultures. Wearing a historical costume? If this costume is meant to be historical, does it further misinformation or historical and cultural inaccuracies? <laughs> I think we need some kind of hashtag movement to keep an eye on bias in Halloween costumes. Wearing a cultural costume? Does this costume reduce cultural differences to jokes or stereotypes? Wearing a religious costume? Does this costume mock or belittle someone's deeply held faith tradition? So I suppose that means if you're in an electric wheelchair, no going to a party as the Pope Mobile. Likely most importantly, could someone take offense with your costume and why? Here is a great resource for costume ideas organized by our own community and consent educators. Let's take a peek. What's top of the list? If I were a student there, I don't think they'd actually appreciate me dressing like that. Especially if I got a fake tan to match this woman. We are one Yale, and the actions of one affect us all. So in whatever fashion you choose to participate in Halloween activities, we encourage everyone to be safe and thoughtful during your celebration. Sincerely, the Intercultural Affairs Committee. And then, a load of names. So what the hell did I just read? That is the ending to a mass email sent out to students at Yale. This is a message that was considered necessary to send to young adults attending an elite university. And it was brought to light by FIRE, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, an organization I highly recommend keeping an eye on. I'll be putting a link to their website in the description of this video, alongside any links relevant to this particular situation. So we've got the mass sending of a baby being oversensitive email to students at a university. Not really surprising, I think we've all come to expect this sort of thing. A bit sad, but not the end of the world. However, as I'm sure you suspect if you don't know already, there is more to this. Erica Christakis, I think that's how you say the name, associate master of one of Yale's undergrad residential communities, wrote a response to this email, and apparently shared it with all of Silliman College, the residential community she is associate master of. In it, she effectively said that she and her husband, who is also faculty and is in fact the master of Silliman College, had heard from students who were frustrated by the original email, and she basically goes on to argue that she's not sure it's the place of administration to try to draw a line about what's acceptable or unacceptable regarding Halloween costumes, and that it's better to tolerate offense and to discuss and blah blah. Totally innocuous. You can go read the whole thing yourself, but here's a little extract to demonstrate just how harmless this email was. I don't wish to trivialize genuine concerns about cultural and personal representation and other challenges to our lived experience in a plural community. I know that many decent people have proposed guidelines on Halloween costumes from a spirit of avoiding hurt and offense. I laud these goals, in theory, as most of us do. But in practice, I wonder if we should reflect more transparently, as a community, on the consequences of an institutional, which is to say, bureaucratic and administrative, exercise of implied control over college students. And to me, that was the overall point of the whole message. Do you students want to be babied by the people above you, just to avoid offense? Do you really want to hand them that control? Do you think they're suitable for that role? And she says, she doesn't think she is. That's what I got out of it. A good message intelligently written. Certainly not something worth having a screaming tantrum over. But unfortunately, and I would hope embarrassingly for students at Yale, the president of FIRE was at the university to speak at a conference, and he caught just that on video. Students confronted Nicholas Christakis, and we are going to take a look at some highlights. First off, the thing that struck me about all of the footage that was uploaded is that this guy's been put in a position where it's more like he's dealing with a bomb that's going to go off than engaging in a conversation. I'm doing my best, everyone. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best, okay? So I'm trying to address her directly and as a human being face to face. And I don't want to turn my back to her. And I don't want to yell at her. I'm this car if I raise my voice so you can hear me. And now I'm going to cut the red wire. Or, or was it the green one? Not the most relaxing meeting. And it turned out he was right to be wary. I do not... Be quiet! Yes, fucking really. And the guy takes it. I'm not suggesting he should have gone off back at her, but he doesn't leave or object to it. For all students, you understand that? As your position of master, it is your job to create a place of comfort and home for the students that live in Silliman. 
I you have not done that. He allows himself to be disciplined like a small child. As much as she's being obnoxious, and you'll see it gets worse, and as much as her behavior is her responsibility, I don't think Mr. Doormat here is helping much, and I have a feeling these students are used to this kind of response. Alright, let's watch her continue to educate him. By sending out that email, that goes against your position as master. Do you understand that? Then no, I stop. don't agree with that. Oh, shit. You do not say you disagree to these people. Then why the fuck did you accept the position? Because Who I have the a fuck hired you? I have a different vision. Should... Oh, and by the way, did you catch that little clicking noise? This student screaming in that guy's face? Fine. No one seems bothered by her behavior. Clapping, though, that is triggering. Yeah. So, my question is, are you going to say that? They snap their fingers instead. I think it was The Simpsons that had the intimidating mimes skit, with them slowly advancing on someone clicking their fingers. I'm sure one of you will know what I'm talking about, and now we're about to learn exactly what this tantruming tot finds unacceptable about the response to the original email. It is not about creating an intellectual space! It is not! Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here! It is not about creating an intellectual space. It is not. Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here. It's like that old idiom. Home is where the heart is, and the brain isn't. Reminder, this is over Halloween costumes. Anti-offense guidelines being sent out to students by a committee led to the suggestion that people should be able to handle offense and talk about it without higher-ups and authority getting involved. Go read the emails, that's pretty much it. For some students at Yale, that is apparently too much. Students are rebelling against faculty because they're trying not to take advantage of the authority they have. Has some kind of switch been flipped? Has a, has a spell been cast? Are teachers for rebellion and students for rules now? You know, flipping out and getting in someone's face to protest and fight the great injustice of a well-written letter in defense of free expression. Is that how a student behaves? Is that how the people who are supposed to be our future behave? I hope not, because that would mean that one of these days, our future is going to get its ass beaten. But, as usual, that's just another one of my harmful opinions. And now for a touch of shilling. Teespring campaigns for logo shirts are about halfway through. Because I've done a low price like a sale, these campaigns have required quite a few more to meet the minimum to print. So here's how they're going at the moment. The US shirt with logo and text is guaranteed to print at the end of the campaign. The US shirt that is just the logo requires three more before the 16th if it's going to print. The EU logo only shirt requires eight more. And the EU logo plus text requires 20 more. If the campaign you've ordered from does not meet its minimum by the 16th, it won't print and of course you won't be charged. I will be running these designs again, but they will never be at this price again. Link in the description if you are interested. 